This fourth Sunday of Easter, every year we celebrate the Feast of the Good Shepherd. And it's always a feast to me where there's a little bit of a, a uh, what do I want to say, uh, probably a little confusion. Uh, most of us have never seen a shepherd. Uh, shepherds are not that common in our, even in our agricultural areas these days. And, but there's images about shepherds and about what a shepherd is like. And uh, those images can sometimes be very warm and fuzzy and good, but other images of shepherds are, shepherds are pretty tough characters. <laughs> I've seen some shepherds and they're pretty rough sometimes. Shepherds are not always just like that, those pictures of Jesus, you know, the, I, I love those pictures of Jesus where he's nice and he's all clean and his hair is all combed and he's got the little lamb he's carrying and it's a nice dear little picture, but it isn't very real. That's not what the Good Shepherd was about. The Good Shepherd was someone who went out and stayed with the sheep. The Good Shepherd is, was a hearty one and he was one that was strong and he was willing to really give himself totally for his sheep, to care for them and to protect them and to lead them in right directions. That's the type of person that Jesus is talking about when he said that he's the good shepherd and that the people will hear his voice. And the shepherd is one who also is the gate. In those times, they used to have these enclosures that they would use, they would keep the sheep in at night in order to try to protect them. But a lot of times those enclosures did not have a gate to them. There was an open end there. And so the shepherd would lay down there across the opening. And if anyone's going to get, go in and take the sheep, they had to go over the, the shepherd. And it was kind of one of those things of saying, over my dead body will you get my sheep? And Jesus truly gave his body, even unto death, for us, the sheep. And so that image of Jesus as the gate for the sheepfold, that image of Jesus as truly the good shepherd, as the one who would be so strong and vital as even to lay down his life for each and every one of us. That's the shepherd we're talking about. And the shepherd who says, my sheep will listen to my voice. There are so many disparate voices within our world today. There are so many different things that call us to into a variety of things and attitudes and values. And we are so influenced by the media and by the culture. Are we really listening to the voice of Jesus in the midst of that? Do we listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd who calls us into fidelity, that sometimes calls, calls us to go against the grain, that calls us, calls us to be countercultural rather than just going along with the trends of our culture, with what is humanly acceptable? Do we truly listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd? The voice of the Good Shepherd reflected in Scripture. The voice of the Good Shepherd articulated through the teaching of the Church. The working of the Holy Spirit within our minds and our hearts, calling us to greater fidelity. That voice of the Good Shepherd that comes to us in the events and the people of our lives, calling us to become our best self, and to hold on to those ideals rather than to give way to the power of evil. Jesus challenges us by saying that he's a good shepherd. A good shepherd could be gentle, but a good shepherd could also be very challenging. A good shepherd would lead his flocks and he would protect the flock from the wolves and from the bears and from anything else that threatened them. But he would also call people to accountability and to his sheep to truly be faithful. It's interesting that so often one of the things that I look about in Christ is his compassion. 
because I think I yearn for his compassion myself. I hope that the Lord is compassionate towards me. And I think all of us want that compassion. But to also know that Jesus wasn't always compassionate. Sometimes Jesus spoke rather strongly, particularly against complacency, against self-righteousness, against being too self-satisfied and going along with what was popular rather than what was true. Jesus could become very impatient with those things. Christ is truly the Good Shepherd. He's the one who lays down his life for our salvation. He is not just the one who stands at the gate, but truly has died upon the wood of the cross. But Christ is also the Good Shepherd who calls us to greater fidelity, to listen to his voice even when it challenges our own attitudes to greater fidelity, to greater life in him. And he says, ultimately, he comes that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Too often, I think our belief in Jesus is seen as a negative, something that holds us back, something that's kind of downcast, but it's supposed to be just the opposite. It's to know freedom, it's to know greater life, to have life more fully and more abundantly when we experience the truth and the freedom and the compassionate love of Christ, the Good Shepherd.